Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the uh, focus vertices as well as co-vertices of an ellipse when the center is at the origin. And again, we know that the center is at the origin because the center labeled up here is h comma k. And for the formulas here, I have x minus h, y minus k, and none of these have any subtraction. So therefore, the center is at the origin. Um, I also wrote up the general equation for a ellipse when it has a um, horizontal major axis. I wrote the equation of ellipse for a vertical major axis, as well as I again reiterated what, the, um, what A represented, what B represents, what C represents, as well as the relationship between A, B, and C. Um, okay, so when doing these problems, a couple things I always look for. Remember that A is the endpoints of our major axis, and the major axis is always larger than the minor axis. It doesn't matter if it's vertical or horizontal. I'm just going to move my hands. But the major axis is always larger than the minor axis. That means A is always larger than B. So therefore, A squared has to be always larger than B squared. So when I look at a problem, the first thing I want to do is identify A squared and B squared. Well, in this example, my A squared and my B squared are my denominators, right? It's either A squared, B squared, or B squared, A squared. Since 25 is larger than 16, I can determine, let's use a different color, that a squared is equal to 25 and b squared is equal to 16. Now, to find um, my vertices, my co-vertices, and my center, I need to figure out what a, b, and c are. So a squared and b squared aren't going aren't to help me. I need to figure out what a and b are. Well, I don't really need to do a lot of math. I can just say if a squared is 25, then I know a is 5. And if b squared is 16, then I know b is 4. Now, typically at this point in time, I always like say, well, I might as well figure out what c is. So I go to my relationship, and I have c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And I plug in my values for um, a squared and b squared. So therefore, I have c squared equals 25 minus 16. c squared equals 9. So therefore, c is equal to 3. So pretty cool, pretty quick. Um, I was able to identify A, B, and C. That doesn't happen very often that easily. Uh, the next thing, to identify the vertices, co-vertices, and the center, I like, to draw a, um, I like to draw a picture, or at least a graph. I like to plot the information. All right, so I'm just going to draw a nice coordinate axis. I know that the center is at 0, 0, because that information was given to me. Now, remember, A squared was 25. Since A squared is under the x, that means my major axis is horizontal. If a squared is under the y, that means your major axis is vertical. So a lot of times what I think is helpful is sometimes just drawing like a nice little dashed line to remember that that is the major axis. Now you don't need to write the minor axis, but just so you know, the minor axis is perpendicular. And where the mi minor, minor and the major axis intersect is the center. All right. But it's important, a lot of times why I like writing that is because what lies on the major axis? Well, the vertices are the endpoints of the major axis. The center lies on the major axis, as well as the foci. The minor axis is going to be your two co-vertices, are the endpoints of your minor axis. All right, so we know that A is equal to 5. A represents the distance to the vertices from the center. So here's my center. Well, one vertice is going to be to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 label that vertice. The other vertice is going to be to the left, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because um, A represents a distance in the positive and in the negative direction. But it's a length, so it's never going to be negative. It's just in the negative directions. It goes to the right and to the left. Again, think about like a picture. Here's an ellipse. There's your major axis. You have two endpoints. Here's your center. You're going to the right. You're going to the left. OK, so now I can also, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. The next one is, let's go ahead and find our foci. Uh, foci is 3. 3 is a distance to the foci from the center. Remember, though, the foci also lie on the major axis. So that's 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Okay, And then the last one is going to be our co-vertices. Those are going to be perpendicular to the major axis because they're the endpoints on the minor axis. And the co-vertices is going to be a distance of b. And b, in this case, is 4. So I'll go up four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. If you want to sketch the graph, you could do that. But it's not necessary, because I'm not asking you to graph. I just wanted you to find the information. So last but not least, we're going to write in the information now we have. Um, a lot of students will get stuck with this. So that's why I say, just draw it on a graph so you can visualize, see what everything is. 
So the vertices from the center are going to the right four and going to the left four. You could, um, I'm going to write them out separately. So I could say my vertices are 4 comma 0 and negative 4 comma 0. My foci are to the right 3 and to the left 3 from the center. So those two points would be 3 comma 0, negative 3 comma 0. And my covertices are up 4 and, ah, why did I write that down? That's 5. My bad. Sorry about that. A represents the distance from the vertices, right? So that's 5. Covertices are up 4 and down 4. So I could do 0 comma 4 and 0 comma negative 4. Okay? And there you go. Found my uh, covertices, vertices, and foci. All right, on to the next problem. Uh, again, we're gonna, I like to get right off the bat with finding my A, B, and C. It's the easiest thing to do. Um, remember, A squared is always larger than B squared. A squared is always larger than B squared for an ellipse. So we see that 16 is larger than 14. So therefore, I can say that A squared is equal to 16 and B squared is equal to 4. Therefore, A is equal to 4 and B is equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and figure out what c squared is. So I can say c squared equals a squared minus b squared. OK, that from that formula. So I have c squared equals 16 minus 4. c squared equals uh, 12. Take the square roots of both sides. I could say c equals the square root of 12, which reduced um, is 4 times 3, which is equal to 2 radical 3. Um, I like the simplified version. You could also approximate. And I think when I approximate, I did this in my calculator earlier, you get 3.46. Now, the approximation, I think, is helpful for students when they're plotting it. Like, I asked them to graph it, so I think knowing the approximation is helpful. But in reality, you don't really need to know the approximation. Uh, you can just use the exact values. OK, um, so we found a, b, and c. Now we notice, though, that a squared was 16. a squared's under the y now, right? So that means my major axis is now vertical. So my two vertices are going to be vertical. Co-vertices are going to be horizontal. My foci lie on the major axis, so they're also going to be vertical. So again, let's plot the information we're given. We know the center's at 0, 0. a represents the distance from my center to my vertice, but that sense the major axis is vertical. I'm going to go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'll label them vertice, vertice. My uh, co-vertices are going to be going now left and right because now my major axis is horizontal. And they're going a distance of b with 2, which is the distance from the center to your co-vertices. So I'll just write cv, cv. And then my foci is 3.46. So it's not, it's more than 3, but less than 4. So I'm going to use red because it's getting really close to the vertices. But there's going to be my two foci. OK, now I should also remember when we're taking the square root, plus or minus, but yeah, it goes either way. OK, so now we've plotted our points. And you can connect if you want. OK, um, but now what we need to do is, find, is write actually the points. So you could write them out separately, like I did over here. But I am perfectly OK. I accept this from my students. But I think it just depends on your teacher, the test, um, and the book you know, that you're using, how they want you to write them out. But the vertices, especially when I have something where the center is at 0, 0, where it's a lot easier, I'm just going to write the vertices are going to be up 4 and down 4. So I'm just going to write 0, comma, plus or minus 4. Foci, also are vertical. but I'm going to use the simplified version here. So that's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 2, radical 3. I would never use the approximation. So hopefully your teacher doesn't let you do that either. And then the last one is covertices. Now the covertices are going left and right, 2. So that's going to be plus or minus 2, comma, 0. And there you go. All right, let's get into the last, uh, next example. So the next example does not look like this example, right? I'm not dividing by anything. Um, you know, there's no a squared or b squared right now. So one important thing to look back at the problem is to notice that each of these formulas are equal to 1. So this equation is not equal to 1. So what I need to do is make it equal to 1. So I divide by 100 on both sides. Just like a times b plus c, you apply the distributive property. Well, b plus c over a, you apply the distributive property. 
So I need to divide the 100 into 25 and the 100 into 4. When doing that, 25 over 100 is 1 fourth. So you could write that as 1 fourth x squared. Plus 4 over 100 is going to be 1 25th y squared. But also remember, 1 half times x is equal to x divided by 2, right? So if you're multiplying something by a fraction, it's the same thing as just dividing it by the denominator. Or if it's 1, as long as 1's in the numerator. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite the problem. Instead of using the fractions, I want it to be in my equation of an ellipse. So I'm going to write this as x squared over 4 plus y squared over 25 equals 1. Now it's in much more familiar territory, right? Um, I can easily identify what a squared is. a squared is going to equal 25. And I can quickly e identify b squared, which is just equal to 4. Now again, um, to find c squared, or let's figure out a and b first. a equals 5, b equals 2. C squared equals 25 minus 4. C squared equals 21. So therefore, C equals the square root of 21. I can't simplify the square root of 21 like I did 12, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Uh, notice that A squared is under Y, so it's a vertical major axis like this problem. Um, so yeah, I should graph it. OK, so I have the center at 0, 0 again. A is 5, so that's going up and down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Vertices, down 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Vertices. My, since my major axis is vertical, that means my vertices are the endpoints, and my foci also lay on the major axis, which is square root of 21. Now you might say, well, what's square root of 21? I don't know where, how to graph that. Well, think about it. If 4 squared is 16 and 5 squared is 25, the square root of 21 has to be between 4 and 5. So just estimate here. So that's going to be between 4 and 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's right there. Foci. Foci. Co-vertices, though, is opposite of the major axis. They're on the minor axis, which is 2. So I'm going to go to the right 2, to the left 2. Co-vertice, co-vertice. So you can see very skinny, um, very skinny kind of ellipse. And now I can just write the information. So I have my vertices. Vertices are going to be up and down 5. So that's going to be 0, comma, plus or minus 5. Uh, foci are up and down square root of 21. I'm not going to use the approximation, so I'm just going to 0 plus or minus the square root of 21. And my co-vertices are left and right 2. So I'm going to write co-vertices are going to be plus or minus 2 comma 0. All right, last example. I'm not really sure why I chose this problem, but you know, it just kind of looked, looked interesting. So I figured, yeah, let's go and give it a shot. Um, so in this example, I have x squared equals 1 minus 4y squared. Uh, first thing I need to do is, again, make it look like some kind of equation over here. So what I'll do is I'm going to add 4y squared to both sides and subtract. Oh, I'm going to keep the 1 there. So by doing that, I now have a new equation, x squared plus 4y squared equals 1. And you might be looking at that and saying, well, um, four y squared equals one. Um, four divided by four times that is the same thing as dividing by one fourth. Yeah, okay. So multiplying by 4 is the same thing as dividing by 1 fourth. For instance, if I said um, 2 divided by 4, that's the same thing as being 2, or I'm sorry, 2 multiplied by 4 is the same thing as dividing by 1 fourth. Because to multiply by a fraction, you'd rewrite that as 4 over 1 times 4 over 1. So I need to find a denominator. And what I, what I liked about this one is we don't have any denominators, right? We don't have an a squared or a b squared. Well, again, we do have an a squared and a b squared. The x is 1. And the y squared, I can actually rewrite this. Multiplying by 4 is the same as dividing by its reciprocal. Remember, Actually, let me put it to you this way. 
Remember, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by a reciprocal. So, mul so multiplying by a number is the same thing as dividing by its reciprocal. So in reality, I can rewrite this as 1 fourth. So therefore, we look at this and we say, oh, that doesn't look fun, but it's a fraction, but we can still deal with this. Um, one is obviously larger than 1 fourth, so therefore I'm going to have a horizontal major axis. I can say that a squared equals 1, b squared equals 1 fourth. Um, so therefore, a equals 1, b equals 1 half, because 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth. And then I can figure out what c squared is. So c squared equals. Du, 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 du. 1 minus a squared minus b squared, 1 minus 1 fourth. c squared equals 3 fourths. So therefore, c equals uh, the square root of 3 fourths, which is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Ugh, it's like, oh man, it's just so nasty, right? But it's OK, because guess what? The center is at 0, 0. So we're really not that bad. As long as we know a, b, and c, and we know if our major axis is horizontal or vertical, we're OK. Um, so let's plot the information. a is 1. Uh, again, a is a squared is under the x, because 1 is larger than 1 fourth. So we have a horizontal major axis. So I'm going to make big ones. So a, so there's my vertice. There's my other vertice. My covertice is going in the opposite direction, which would be 1 fourth. And then my foci is going to be the square root of 3 over 2, which, you know, approximating that is um, a little bit difficult. That's going to be 0.86. So, but that makes sense. Okay? And then again, my center is at 0, 0. So when labeling this, uh, we know that the vertices, again, are going to be, be plus or minus left and right. So I'm just going to do plus or minus 1, comma 0. My foci are, again, going to be plus or minus, but square root of 3 divided by 2. So I'm going to do plus or minus the square root of 3 divided by 2, comma 0. And my covertices are now going up or down. And they're going up or down the value of b, which is 1 half. So that's 0, comma, plus or minus 1 half. Whew, I think I got that right. Cool. All right, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you determine the vertices, co-vertices, and foci of an ellipse when the center is at the origin. Thanks.